Good morning, Meg. Good to have you back. Well, thanks a lot. Happy to be here. Well, always happy to just see you're still in the race because anybody running, uh, I mean, these days, it seems like the last thing you want to do without having a headache for the rest of your life. But you're upbeat, you're optimistic about it, and, and now the governor's race is less crowded because Tom Campbell's going over to run for Senate. So has that done anything that you can really get your hands on right now in terms of, of support or polling, or is it just too early to figure out the impact, if any? You know, I, it's hard to um, precisely pinpoint the impact, but I think on the margin it has um, helped my candidacy. Um, you know, you look at where the polls are now, the PPIC poll that came out last week, I think I'm at uh, 41%. My opponent, the remaining opponent, is at 11%. So I think on the margin it benefited me. But, you know, polls, you can't put too much stock in them at this point. We just have to continue to get out there with our message around creating and keeping jobs in California, getting government spending to a more reasonable level, and fixing K-12 through education. So yeah, let me ask you about one poll that was all uh, all the rage on Sunday with the LA Times. We talked about it some yesterday, and the headline is Public Ignorance Bites California in the Wallet. This is Mark Baldessari's uh, investigation over at Public Policy Institute. And among the things revealed, he says, I don't know that this speaks to how much they, meaning us, the California people, know, but more about how little they trust the people in Sacramento to make the decisions. Now, in your new book, Hot Off the Presses, which is not the title, by the way, it's called The Power of Many, <laughs> Values for Success in Business and Life, your first par- your first uh, uh, chapter here is about trust that people are basically good. And, and I think you and I agree on that in terms of the uh, the can-do spirit, but may- we got to face it, California has been beaten down so much, and part of the problem, the spending problem, is, is is the voters' problem, because we've been out there approving, uh, many Californians anyway, approving these seemingly uh, intoxicating free money propositions at the polls for years. So that that's part of the spending problem, isn't it? Oh, it certainly is part of the spending problem. But I think, um, you know, what I what I know to be true from my 30 years in business is if you set your mind on um, achieving a small number of things, I think we as Californians can join together and say, you know what, we're going to take California back, and we're going to get our arms around three things. We're going to do three things at 100%, and spending is one of them. And, uh, you know, clearly there's going to have to be some changes made because, unfortunately, we have a government we cannot afford. And, you know, by the way, that's an analysis that I think is very apt at the federal level, what we're yeah, seeing yeah. You know, today as well. Well, and part of the problem in this, this survey I was mentioning here is they asked Californians, uh, again, you're limited to people being polled and how the questions are asked, but sure. they, they said, all right, where does the state get its biggest chunk of money? 30% said sales taxes, 28% said personal income taxes, 18% said corporate taxes, 17% said car fees. Uh, more than seven in ten got it wrong because, as you know, last year fifty five percent of state revenues came from income taxes, thirty one percent from sales tax, ten percent corporations, two percent from from car fees. But if if Californians are too busy to understand how it already works and it's out of control, how do you rein that in? And how, and more importantly, how do you connect with Californians to to resonate? Yeah. You know. Yeah. To get the message well, I out. think, um, you know, it would be great if every Californian had the time to go deep on these issues, but frankly, most people don't. No. And so what they are looking for is someone who they believe has a background that is relevant to the challenges we face today, someone they can believe in and trust will, will do the right thing, and, and they know what issues they're focused on. And, you know, as I talk to people on the campaign trail, they don't want to be deep on the issues of the state of California. They just want someone to fix it. They want to believe someone can fix it, and, uh, and they they want to believe that, that it can be fixed. And and my sense is it absolutely can be fixed. I mean, we can turn California around. It will not be easy. There are going to have to be some changes in the way we do things. But we can do this. We're, after all, we're Californians. And, you know, tell Californians we can't do something. And I think we rally to say, you know what, we can. Meg Whitman with us here on 1170 KCBQ. You know, one of the things that they'll say about you, the opposition will say, well, you know, you're talking about cuts, but be specific. And, you know, not that you can be specific in six 60-second radio ads with all of this minutia in the budget and, and what the what fights you have to fight in order to get somewhere on that. But, you know, if you're going to cut $15 billion out of the state budget, where do you start? Yeah. And, and how do you go up against the fat cat unions? I'll use some of the Obama speak here like he does about bankers. <laughs> fat cat unions, you know? Well, there's, you know, a couple of big areas one has to go after, and we've talked about this before. One is we have to go um, to reduce, ultimately, the number of people who work for the state. And you and I have discussed that over the last five years, the state has added 40,000 workers. We're now up to 357,000 workers. And um, we did, you know, very well five years ago when we had 40,000 less workers. We should aim to get back to that number through attrition and, and other things. 
we've got to take on welfare. You know, we have got to provide for the neediest, but you've probably heard um, that our welfare costs are disproportionate to um, what they sh- what they should be. Yeah, we staggering. Well, you, you've got that on the commercials these days. Yeah. You're talking about California versus yeah. New York, and I think a lot of people hear that and go, wow, I had no idea. I know that we've been sort of this nirvana for people who want to live off the dole, but it's a lot worse than we thought. It is. And, you know, interestingly, Bill Clinton, um, in, in sort of irony, was the one who really pioneered uh, welfare to work. And California did not never really um, embrace that. And uh, so we've got to do that, not only for cost-saving reasons, but because it's the right thing to do. That is the path to, to dignity and self-respect and, and independence. And I think that's what every Californian wants. So there's, there's certainly work we can do there. There's also work in terms of um, deploying, utilizing technology to deliver more with less. Think about it. Almost every Every business in California and in the United States, the way we've gotten more efficient over the years is utilizing technology mm-hmm. to automate, to, to uh, make things much more cost-effective and much more cost-effective in fighting fraud. You know, estimates are there's four to four and a half to $5.2 billion worth of fraud in just the administration of Medicare and Medi-Cal in well, California. Now, let's talk about the health care issue because